Hello everyone, welcome back to our tutorial on making your first game in Coco's Creator. We already have our player ready, but now we have to give it some type of gameplay. Let's make the monster collect stars that are appearing on the screen. Let's give it a challenge by having the stars slowly disappear. If the star disappears before you collect it, you lose. So, let's get back to our program. Now, we have four nodes in our game. We have the background, the ground, the monster, and our main camera. So now we need to add a star. But we have an issue. If I just add the star, if I touch it, it'll disappear. And we'll have to add a new star node. I really don't want to add 20 star nodes that appear at different times. I just want one star node that appears when I need it and disappears when it's used. So to do this, we need to make the star node into a prefab or a prefabricated node. These nodes can appear again and again, cleaning itself up and the memory it used. So let's build the star into a prefab. First, let's add the star into the scene by dragging the star into the node tree. Now, let's add a script for the star for hit detection. First, let's create a script called star inside the scripts folder. Next, let's open it up and add a property called pick radius and set it to zero. Save the script and come back to Coco's to add the script to the star. Just like with our monster, add the script using the add component button and go into the custom component area. Now let's set the pick radius to 60 and save our work. Now the star node has all it needs and we can make it into a prefab. To do this, we drag the node back into the asset window and you'll see a box appear to the name star. This is now a prefab. Go back to the star node and delete it from the node tree. We don't need the star at the beginning of the game. Now it's time to make the script that contains all of the gameplay. In the scripts folder, right click and click on new JavaScript. Next, name it game and then double click on it to open it in the code editor. Let's add a few properties for the gameplay. Remember, if this is too fast, you can always pause your video and take the time to write it out. Let's add a star prefab property to have it so that the star appears in your game. Give it a max and a min star duration for how long we want the star to appear. The ground to help us know how far up we can add the star. And the player to obtain information about the location of the monster. Now that we have the, some of the game logic for the star, let's add it to the game. The best place is to put it in the component of the canvas. This is where the game is happening, so let's add this component. Now we need to connect all the assets in the node tree to the script so the game understands what is a star, what is the ground, and what is the monster. Let's add the star prefab from our assets and place it in the star prefab property. Let's drag the ground node and place it in the ground property and the player node into the player property. For the max star duration and min star duration, let's set that to three and five. Now that the game logic knows what each item is, we can build some rules on how all of these things interact with each other inside the canvas node. Let's go back to the game script and edit it to add random positions for the star. This will require three functions, one for the location of the first star, adding a new star, and where to add the new star. On load, we'll set up the first star location. We do this by finding the ground's anchor point y coordinate and adding its height divided by two. We are doing this instead of adding a number 
so that a person can change the size of the window and still get the same gameplay. Next, Spawn New Star will add the rules of adding a new star. This function adds a star to the node tree and then randomly places it in a position of the X and Y coordinate. These coordinates are found from the next function. The final and more difficult function is adding a random X and Y coordinate for the new star. We first call on some math functions built into Cocos Creator and make sure that it will look good on any size screen. We also want to make sure our monster can't run off the stage, so we add a max x variable. Now we can save our project and preview how it looks. We should see one star and it's been randomly placed on the canvas. Great! Now we can add the code we need for the collecting of stars. You may think that it might be the monster's job to know where the star is, but in our example we actually have the star looking for the monster. The reason is, is that it knows where it is and it knows if the monster's touching it. So let's give the star the power to recognize where the monster is. First, go to, back to the game script and let's add a new function called spawn new star. This will allow us to know if we need to make a new star. Add the new command and then save the file. Next, let's go to the star script. Let's add a method that is always keeping an eye on the player. Let's call it get player distance, and the one that destroys the node after it touches called on picked. Now all we need is a function that recognizes there was a collision between the player and the star that is running all the time. We do this by adding an update function and telling it that if the distance is less than the pick radius, it's been picked. And once it's picked, it deletes the old star node and adds a new star. Alright, there we go. We can now run the game and see the player jumping around collecting stars and new ones appearing. That's great! Now we need a scoring system, some difficulty added to the game, and some sound effects. We're at the final lesson, so take some time to congratulate yourself, and let's get ready for the final video of the series. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button if you'd like more video tutorials, as well as more interviews with Cocos Creators, and we hope that you're having a fun time building your game with Cocos Creator. We'll see you in the next and final lesson.